In this video, we'll learn what channels and layers are inside of Mari and how we can begin importing textures into them. Okay, great. So we've got our project created here. We've learned a little bit about the UI and navigation. And it's time to talk a little bit more about how Mari manages our textures when we're creating them or importing them or whatever the case may be. So I mentioned when we created this project that we had opportunities to add something called a channel to the project when we were creating it. We opted not to do that. Now even though we chose not to, for each of our Mari objects, Mari has added a channel by default. You can see I have my body object selected here. And if I come over here to the right and look in this channels palette, you can see here that it added a single channel called diffuse. Now because it did that here, you'll also notice if we switch objects to say the eyes, it also did it over here. Now the only difference in this project being the ground, uh, again this is a PTEX object, not a UV object. So in this case the default channel that was created is called PTEX. Now each one of these channels has a resolution assigned to it for a UV object. Uh, and if we wanted to we could come over here to our UV tab with say the body geometry selected. And we can look at each one of these patches right here. And you can see here that we have a number in the lower left corner. Uh, this is called a UDIM number. Now to the right of that we have the resolution of the particular channel we have selected for that object. So for the diffuse channel on the body object we are looking at a 1K texture size per patch. Now that may or may not be enough resolution for the detail you want to capture in something like the body, but for something small like the eyes or maybe the teeth, 1K you would think m surely would be enough resolution. We're actually going to talk a little bit more about adjusting resolution for channels in an upcoming video, but I want to talk a little bit more about the concept of a channel. So we have a channel created by default for our body mesh here, and uh, Mari has named it Diffuse, but we don't have to use that for Diffuse. We could rename it and use it for whatever we want to. Now the point is, is um, Mari is making an assumption here that the first thing we're going to want to paint for this particular object is color information. If that's the case, then we would likely name this channel Diffuse. But if we wanted to control things like the specular highlights, we may want to create a channel to hold texture information that would uh, control this type of thing. You can see here that right now we're looking at sort of the default shading, and he's pretty shiny, but uh, we could come in here and create a new channel. Let's go ahead and create one here. Now we can do this in a couple of different ways. We could click on this button right here to manually create a new channel. And in doing so, this would pop up right here. Now it just so happens to be remembering some of my recent channel names. Uh, if we drop this down, you can see some of the channels that I've created and named. Uh, let's say we wanted to create a channel for ambient occlusion information. We can just name that by typing in the name here. We can set a size for that channel. Now this, in the case of this body object, will set this resolution for each one of those three patches. So let's say we wanted to set this to something like 2K. There we go, 2048 by 2048. We can set a bit depth. For an ambient occlusion channel, 8-bit should be fine. And we can also set a file space. You'll also notice that we have our little color space rollout here, but again, I would recommend taking the defaults for this unless you have specific reasons to not take the defaults. Okay, so in doing so, we can come in here now and choose a default color to fill this channel with. Now in the case of an ambient occlusion channel, uh, more than likely we're going to be bringing texture information into that channel, so really it doesn't matter what color we fill it with. But we can click on this little button right here and bring up this color uh, dialog to select whatever color we'd like. For right now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this out, and we're going to take the default gray. We can choose to create this channel for the body only, or we can actually create this ambient occlusion channel for all of the objects inside of our project. 
I'm not going to do that, but it is available to us. So we'll just say body only. And you'll notice that a new channel is going to pop up here inside my channels palette. Now we also have the ability to create quick channels. So right down here, you can see there's four little icons. Basically, these are fill colors for the quick channel that we're creating. And we can click on any of these four to create a channel of this selected resolution and this selected bit depth. So if we wanted to create a channel that was transparent, we could do this one, gray, white, or black, just simply by clicking these buttons. Now, I'm not going to do that for right now. I want to talk a little bit more about how our channels store texture information here. So Mari is a layer-based painter by default, meaning um, it functions uh, in a top-down order with layers, very similar to applications like Photoshop. So what you should understand about this is that each one of these channels we create has a layer stack that comes with it. That's visualized right over here to the right with this small hamburger icon. Now we can click this icon at any time and we can access the layer stack just like so. Now I'm going to just mouse away so that disappears. You'll notice that I did not receive that there. There it is. There we go for the diffuse. We'll just let that disappear. Now very rarely do I actually open these unless I need to see multiple layer stacks at one time because if we look down here, Mari also has a default palette open called the layers palette. Now this palette right here will change based on the channel that we have selected. So you'll see that I have the diffuse channel selected. If I select my AO channel, you'll see that it changes here. Now we can also hold down the I key on our keyboard to access the channel's pop-up and we can quickly switch between not just our objects but also our channels. This is my preferred way of quickly navigating my project. Now inside our channel in the layer stack that comes with it, this is where the magic really happens when it comes to painting textures inside of Mari. We have the ability to create things like paint layers if we're wanting to use our paintbrush to paint a texture. Uh, we have the ability to create things like procedural layers here, and there are a number of different procedural layers. There are layer masks, there are adjustment layers, and of course we can create layer groups. Now we'll touch a bit more on actually painting texture in the next module, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how in the case of our ambient occlusion channel, we can actually bring in an ambient occlusion that was baked from an application like ZBrush. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and switch to a split ortho UV view so we can visualize this. And I have, again, an ambient occlusion map baked for each one of these patches. So what I want you to do is I want you to come over and click on this selection tool right here. And I'm going to select this first patch. Now you can see I actually didn't select the patch, I selected a face. So if this happens to you, just come up here and we're going to switch between face, to, uh, rather switch from face selection mode to patch selection mode. Again, we're going to talk about this in just a couple of videos more in terms of selections. So I'm going to select this first patch. You can see it's highlighted here. This is going to be for our wolf's head. Now keep in mind that Mari is identifying this patch by this UDIM number, 1001. Let's go ahead and right click on the ambient occlusion channel over here. We're going to go to import and we're going to import into the layer stack. Now once we do that, Mari's going to open this dialog here and I'm going to just browse really quickly over to my project files. So I can find an image that I have for you. You'll want to look inside the other files folder here, inside of images, and once you get inside that folder, do this with me. Go ahead and clear out this template field. Just select that and hit backspace. Now this is actually the wrong folder, I apologize. Let's go up a level and let's go into the maps folder. Apologies. So inside the maps folder, you'll see what uh, may look similar to you if you're an experienced ZBrush user. These are maps that were spit out of ZBrush for a multi-tile layout. Now this is where ZBrush and Mari differ in the way that they understand these patches right here. Remember, Mari understands UDIM numbers. 
ZBrush doesn't work with UDIM numbers. It works with UV coordinates. So uh, for this particular patch in Mari, ZBrush knows this one as the U0 V0 position. Now if we went over 1 in the U and stayed at 0 in the V, we would be at this patch right here. So this is how ZBrush names a multi-tile layout. Again, this is something different uh, in terms of the two programs. So what we'll want to do here is we'll want to select this first file for U0, V0. And remember, I have this patch selected. And we're just going to import the selected patch with this selected file. We'll go ahead and import that in. Mari's going to go ahead and import the image just like so. And you can see it's imported that ambient occlusion map for our wolf's head. And we can continue to rinse and repeat this process for the other two patches. Let me go ahead and import in another image here. There we go. We'll grab U1 V0. And we'll bring that in just like so. All right, great. Now I won't import that third patch, but if I go ahead and deselect this patch and zoom in here, you can now see that we have that sort of white and black ambient occlusion map that is uh, filling these layers that have been added to my layer stack. So this was the first import. This is the second import, just like so. Now, if it's a little bit difficult to see, that's probably because we're looking at this with full lighting, and that's this button right here. We can come in here and adjust the lighting preview inside of our canvas. Uh, we can change it from full lighting to basic lighting, which will get rid of the specular highlights, or we can change it to flat lighting, just like so. Once we change this to flat lighting, you can really see that ambient occlusion detail that was included with that baked texture. So this is how you can begin to import textures into Mari channels. Now, if you had problems with the highest uh, resolution for your subtools, bringing them into this Mari project, and you needed to back those down subdivision levels, again, you could use something like Multimap Exporter uh, to export out a normal map. And you could bring in a normal map in place of, say, an ambient occlusion map, just like we did inside this video. All right, great. So we've added in a new channel. Let's go ahead and talk in the next video about how we can begin to view multiple texture channels at once here inside of Mari.